Check out this loose inner tie rod on a 2004 Cadillac Escalade. This tie rod was recommended and has been brought back for replacement. We'll start by removing the center cap from the wheel. This can be achieved by using a flathead screwdriver or a pry bar. They actually make a specialty tool for this specific application so you do not scratch the wheels. In this case we'll use a small piece of cardboard to pop that center cap loose. You want to make sure that you pick up the center cap if it fell on the floor and set it off in a safe location. The factory GM lug nuts on this vehicle are 21 millimeter. If you need a recommendation for good quality air impact, check out this AirCat 1055-TH. One of my tool reps gave it to me to try out for free. I've added a flexible fitting and it's really handy in tight spots. It also works well on heavily torqued down fasteners. Here I explain to my students some of the other components that we've inspected. We'll be focusing on the inner and outer tie rod today. I identify the jam nut. The jam nut is threaded on the inner tie rod. When jammed up against the outer tie rod, it locks the alignment in place. This jam nut is a 21 millimeter, so I use a 21 millimeter wrench to loosen it up. Sometimes heat is required to loosen these jam nuts up in Michigan. Once the jam nut's loosened up, we can go on to the next step, which is identifying the fastener that secures the outer tie rod to the steering knuckle. We're going to use an impact to make quick work of this. If you use a wrench, ratchet, or other hand tool, you may find that the stud will spin around in a circle. That is because the outer tie rod uses a ball and socket type joint. You may have to pry down on the outer tie rod to loosen this up or revisit it with an air impact. If the stud seems extremely loose in the outside knuckle, it may be worn out beyond repair. Here I'm showing the two hammer method. You'd place one hammer on one side of the knuckle and then tap the knuckle on the other side. A better method would be to use this front end service set. You'll see here in a second that I set this up to pop the outer tie rod out of its place. This tie rod remover and most general front end service sets can be rented from your local auto parts store. I like this OTC set, it does a nice job. Here I'm explaining how the outer tie rod has a tapered stud. That tapered stud is wedged in the knuckle. This is why we're using the outer tie rod and remover. Most of these front end service sets specify not to use an air impact. So we're going to use a wrench on this particular tool. As I tighten this up, I'm putting a clamping force on that stud. It's going to have nowhere to go but up. Once the outer tie rod end is free from the steering knuckle, we can then remove the outer tie rod from the inner tie rod. I'll hold on to the inner tie rod by hand and spin this outer tie rod off. If yours is rusted in place, you may have to hold the inner tie rod with a wrench and then turn the outer tie rod off by hand. I'm counting the number of threads as I back this outer tie rod off. This is going to allow me to get the new tie rod in a similar location so that it's somewhat drivable to get to the alignment rack. If you're having a very difficult time removing the outer tie rod, they do make a special socket that goes on an impact. Here I'm demonstrating the amount of grease that's seeping out of this boot. There's a small crack in the boot, most likely from being over greased. When that happens, grease comes out, salt, water, dirt, and debris make their way in. We're going to go ahead and replace this outer tie rod with a new one. Now, if you're just doing the outer, you could spin it on 
the inner tie rod, just like this. But we're going to go ahead and replace the inner as well. Now the inner was the original culprit in that loose steering complaint. Here I'm showing the new inner tie rod. There's a hex nut on the end of the inner tie rod. That is what we're going to loosen up. I'm using a large adjustable wrench to fit around this inner tie rod. Most standard wrench sets do not have a wrench this large. For some other vehicles, you may need an inner tie rod and tool set. These can be rented at your local auto parts stores. For professional technicians, I'd recommend the Speedy inner tie rod tool made by Mayhew. It's kind of like a one size fits all. We're ready to install our new inner tie rod into the center link. I'm pointing out here to my students that there's a grease fitting on the center link, which allows grease to pass through into the inner tie rod. Notice that the new inner tie rod already has pre-installed thread locker. I like to use Moog steering and suspension components, which are typically manufactured in the United States. They seem to be a bit higher quality and tend to last a little bit longer than the house brand that you may buy for a few bucks less. I apply a little bit of anti-seize to the inner tie rod and threads, and then I install the jam nut. The anti-seize helps prevent the jam nut and outer tie rod from rusting in place on the inner tie rod. I point out the hole in the end of this inner tie rod end. That's where the grease enters into that ball and socket joint. With a steady hand and any luck, you should be able to thread this inner tie rod into place. Once you get it started, you can follow up with your wrench and begin to tighten down the inner tie rod. Once the inner tie rod end is properly torqued down, we can then move on to the outer tie rod. We're going to turn this on approximately 24 threads. Again, the reason for doing this was so that we could get the alignment somewhat close so that when we go to pull it onto the alignment rack, the tire is not dragging sideways. Notice a small hole in the end of the stud. That small hole is for a cotter pin. This manufacturer uses a castle nut and cotter pin, which is a little bit different than the original design. I pushed the card in just a little too far. Now, what my students can see is that I'm installing the castle nut by hand and then finding the appropriate socket to torque it down to specification. The outer tie rod end on this 2004 Cadillac Escalade calls for 48 foot-pounds of torque. So we're going to use the torque wrench and that socket to tighten the outer tie rod end down and then install our cotter pin. You'll see that installation in just a second here. Take a look at this outer tie rod end. It's been torqued down and the cotter pin has been installed. Now it's time to grease. A professional technician will grease the fittings on the outer and inner tie rod end joints. Over greasing these joints can cause the boot to swell up and pop. If this happens, grease will come out, salt, water, dirt, debris will make their way inside the boot. You do not want to overfill these, you just want to make sure that the boot is somewhat plump. I then go on to the inner tie rod end and you'll find that the grease fitting is located on the center link on this particular vehicle. Again, I'm checking that boot to make sure that I'm not overfilling it. At this point, we can reinstall our wheel and tire. I take each lug nut by hand on every car I work on and spin it on three to four threads just to get it started. You'll never cross thread a lug nut if you do this. 
Next we'll take the impact and tighten down each lug nut in a star formation. I'm careful not to over torque it. I'll come back with the torque wrench and give it its final torque. Here I am just making sure that the inner tie rod and outer tie rod end have really tightened up the steering and they have. I set the torque wrench to 140 foot-pounds, which is what the manufacturer specifies for a wheel torque on this 2004 Cadillac Escalade. I carefully torque down all six lug nuts in a star formation. When completed, I go back around a second time just to make sure that all six lug nuts are in fact torqued down to the proper spec. Once torqued down, I can add the center cap. Some center caps specify how they are placed. This one does not. You should be able to just push it back in place. Next stop is over to the alignment rack. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button.